Hello everyone and welcome to the introduction video on the Google Cloud Certified Professional Machine Learning Engineer exam. This video will be covering some exam strategy tips, uh, overview and some, some information about myself. So about me, I have 20 years experience in IT industry with focus on cloud, data engineering, machine learning and DevOps. I hold more than 50 plus certification in all the above fields. I am a two-time Google Professional Machine Learning Engineer Certified and also two-time Google Professional Data Engineer Certified. My course is also available on Udemy for the Google Professional Data Engineer exam just in case you are interested. And here is my LinkedIn profile. So you can just search by my, my name Deepak Dubey and you will be uh, able to come to this profile just in case you want to follow and uh, connect me, connect with me. Okay. So this is my certification for the professional machine learning engineer exam and uh, this was issued very recently on 19 June 2023. So this is the second time when I appeared and this was this is the first time which was in 2020. Uh, this is the first time when I appeared and passed. So good news was like uh, both the time I passed on my first attempt itself. And this is just the uh, uh, other one professional data engineer. I am bringing this because a professional data engineer uh, is something which you should try to pass uh, before you appear for machine learning because some of the some of the information and knowledge uh, that you acquire or gain in the data engineer comes handy for the machine learning engineer so this is that's why I am bringing this over here and this first I attempted in 2020 and uh, this uh, in second time on 2023 uh, for the professional data engineer exam. Okay, exam cost. So the listed price is 200 USD, and uh, as in India here, uh, I with taxes and all, I paid 141.60 USD, along the 120 plus some uh, GST. So price is same whether at home or at exam center. So just uh, this exam you can take at home or at exam center, but the price wouldn't change. Uh, so it's up to you whether you want to take it from home or at exam center. And this is uh, the total price uh, for the second time. Uh, but just to give you a tip, I find it more convenient to give at exam center because um, there's more freedom. Like you can go take bathroom breaks and all. Uh, you don't have to stare at your computer nonstop because usually when you do it uh, through a remotely pro pro uh, protected rights, uh, so you have to basically uh, continuously look at. Uh, because somebody will be watching over you so I feel it's less freedom and you have to make sure the internet connection doesn't break up you have to be inside a room all those things so it's uh, so almost all of the exam I usually prefer to take at the exam center okay certification exam overview so uh, in their website you will see that it's uh, listed at 50 questions but in my case it was 60 questions and it uh, the time was two hours there's no negative marks uh, for uh, any question, so uh, don't make sure you uh, attempt or try every possible question. All multiple choice questions. So usually 90% uh, of the time in my case, it's well like uh, select one uh, right answer out of four. So, but their case, there can be cases, so it will be radio box, so one out of four, but in case if it is two out of five or it could be three out of six. So in that case, you have a, like you have to select multiple answers to get uh, get the full mark, and you can just do the math. It will be like around two minutes for every question. So just you can time yourself, and the, uh, as the exam is progressing, you will be clearly able to see from the very beginning like how many total questions. It be like one uh, one of sixty, two of sixty. So you know like how many questions, and there will be a time uh, tick, uh, ticking uh, on the same page. So you can uh, uh, you can judge your speed of how how you are doing and questions can be answered and also marked for review if you want to review later so every uh, um, every question you will have uh, like uh, a question uh, next to like question it would be something like uh, you have a question and you have options one two three four and below that there will be a checkbox like um, um, you can uh, mark for review so this is uh, so and one more thing no pen and paper allowed or provided and certification valid for two years so just i want to come so so in case you are not sure just make it make sure you mark for review and this exam can be taken on site at exam center or remotely uh, protected so this is up to you i already talked about it 
so pass or fail so you will be given immediately after uh, after you finish on the same screen that you passed or failed and the marks will never be shared in both the situations and just uh, if the exam is hard so there is lot of reading and you have to like focus a lot so my usual exam strategies i usually go by the process of elimination so i have a four question for example so i'll just re- quickly read to a b c d and uh, make a quick mental note Uh, so let's say a and d is definitely wrong so i am left with b and c so i'll just keep in mind that b and c is the right uh, one of the probable solution so usually i'll eliminate two wrong choices as i mentioned a and d for example in for that part, for that some for some particular question then you have to make a decision and guess between the last two so it, let's say b and c is the uh, and if there is a uh, if you are not sure i'll just make it mark mark for review later and i'll go with the uh, one of the possible options so this is on my first go i made a choice and marked all questions for review later so this is just in case uh, that that there be two probable answers which you are think right and two wrong it eliminate the wrong ones if uh, if if there is a, some uh, not sure then mark for review so on my first uh, go i will make i will make a choice and mark so uh, when you start the exam this will happen to most of us there's a cold start problem like uh, as you just come into exam center and you start looking at the question uh, you are not sure because you just want to like uh, warm up so first 10 20 question i'll m- make lot of like mark for review later so i can come back and um, go through them it only if it's very easy question like there is a like just choose one service for this particular problem and i know okay this is a very small there's not uh, there is very small question and there's just quick uh, solution to this uh, and otherwise i will just ma- for my first 10 to 20 question i'll mark review a lot and then on second run i will read through all my answers and either confirm or change my choice so second run like all the questions once i go through 1 to 60 questions uh, uh, second time i'll just uh, quickly uh, uh, see all the questions which i have marked for review and uh, i fix it or just uh, uh, if i have to ch- if i have changed my mind i'll fix it or otherwise i'll just keep it as it is so uh, top topics uh, so these are the top topics vertex ai so vertex ai is all in one solution for all machine learning uh, needs of google cloud so this is you have to be very thorough and the vertex ai is is actually a lot of services inside i'll show you in the next few slides then tensorflow make sure you are very comfortable with tensorflow like from exam point of view then you have tensorflow extended also known as tfx then you have tensorflow data validation so tensorflow data validation also is part of uh, tensorflow extended and tensorflow transform this is also part of tensorflow extended then you have bigquery ml so bigquery ml is a big in, uh, in the exam also because uh, for any any if your data is in bigquery or you need some kind of sql requirement uh, so in most of the situation bigquery ml would be the right solution then kubeflow kubeflow is basically you can run um, like uh, your machine learning uh, jobs on kubernetes uh, or on prem so basically now we don't use virtual machines anymore for any of our machine learning needs so it's all on kubernetes and some fu- uh, be very like comfortable with fundamentals of machine learning feature engineering this is big in exam so make sure you um, you understand feature engineering all aspects like uh, feature crosses uh, bucketizing hashing uh, how we convert uh, one hot encoding dummy hash uh, hash encoding uh, all those things you are very comfortable then uh, exam also focuses a lot on machine learning ops ml ops same as devops but for machine learning because uh, vertex ai and google is uh, moving heavily towards like end to end solution like machine learning pipelines vertex ai pipelines so this is uh, this is what ml ops then make sure you are very comfortable with overfitting and underfitting how to fix overfitting how to prevent overfitting uh, how to interpret uh, underfitting then auto ml uh, so auto ml is automatic machine learning so google has uh, this one uh this one service where you have your data and labels and you uh, ask to google cloud vertex ai for example to create your auto ml models based on your data and labels and you have pre trained apis so pre trained so this is the difference is like if you don't want to do any kind of uh, like if you don't have any data, like data or labels or anything or you want a easiest simplest solution so you just invoke some api for example you send an image and it will tell, it will detect uh, what are the labels 
present in image so if you have a car a bird human so this is the easiest for example natural language vision uh, video intelligence so in case you don't want the simplest easiest no code solution go with pre trained auto ml is some somewhere in between you have data and labels but you don't want to write write any code or something and you have custom training so if you want to develop your own uh, models uh, using uh, tensorflow pytorch keras all those things and then uh, exam also focuses a lot on training serving skew so uh, this this actually ties back to ml ops so how to detect skew how to drift uh, how to detect drift drift in uh, uh, in your models so basically drift detection is something like um, your training model is good it's performing well when you deployed it but over time it has uh, it has uh, the quality has gone down so th that is what is like detecting there is a drift and the model has changed your data has changed so how to de uh, detect so that is through model monitoring all those uh, techniques and strategies will come into picture and just uh, because i talked about vertex ai the vertex ai is all in one solution so you have dashboard this is new feature so this will not come so workbench you now for your uh, notebooks and all so you have pipelines this is also how you create those pipelines then you have feature store you have data sets you have training jobs so here in you can evaluate you can have multiple training jobs running you can see all the performance metrics and all and then going back so i covered feature store data sets and then if you go back you have uh, experiments metadata store model registry online prediction bad predictions so that's why uh, when i when i cover vertex ai like you have to be comfortable with all this inside vertex ai and tips uh, so choose uh, the ideal uh, solution um, basically the reference architectures so in case you are in doubt so this is guesswork this is not uh, i already covered like when you are sure but if you are not sure uh, choose the recommended solution basically choose the google solution for example choose google products over other products so if you have studied reference architectures and all what is the ideal solution choose that and if there is a competition between google product and other product product then choose google product so this is just for the last uh, guess work when you are not sure and uh, try to avoid complex convoluted lengthy manual error prone cumbersome solutions so if if something is like too long and too like virtual machine spinning up uh, virtual machine writing your scripts uh, trying to connect too many uh, services and shell solutions uh, so that's that should be avoided if you know there service exist uh, and just try to go with that this, again this is only when you are doing guess work when you are not sure so if little bit unsure or, uh, or question is too time consuming mark for review later so which i already talked about so just make sure like you have 2 minutes per question so uh, worst case if you are crossing 2 minutes or near to about 3 minutes uh, just mark for review and as i mentioned uh, there is a cold start problem the first 30 minutes uh, just go through 10 20 questions uh, so if if you, if first 30 minutes you are able to like let's say uh, reach 15 20 questions 15 questions let's say so make sure you mark for review uh, so that you get uh, like get into the momentum and then you pick up the speed and then you can come back so usually what i do is uh, from 1 to 50 questions i will uh, i will have lot of mark for review but from 51 to 60 i wouldn't uh, put a uh, mark for review because i'm nearing at the end so there is no point in going back and then i go back and uh, see all the questions which i have marked for review and then you will pick up uh, like as you read through all the questions so after reading through all 60 questions you will figure out some unsure questions so because you uh, some questions are actually tied to each other so uh, so this will be some topic then you will read some other questions and other some 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 other options and you can go back and see okay i have read this in previous questions so this probably makes sense and then i can fix it uh, mark for review uh, questions later and if all uh, so usually this is like if if i am if there is no guess work then just whatever i guessed first uh, the intuition uh, whatever is your gut saying so just go with your first guess and do review the sample questions so if you uh, click this link uh, you will be coming to professional machine learning engineer so exam page and you will see the fees and all so as i mentioned uh, 50 to 60 questions but uh, this is my mine my case is by 60 it can be 50 also and uh, make sure you just uh, check out the exam guide and uh, sample questions so exam guide uh, these there are a total of six section framing ml problems architecting ml solutions designing data preparation and processing systems and developing ml models automating and orchestrating ml models 
and then monitoring and optimizing uh, and maintaining ml solutions and then you have uh, this uh, sample questions this is consisting of 20 20 question so make sure you go through all these 20 questions so exam guide and sample questions and small motivation like uh, uh, first time when I appeared, I was able to like I was lucky enough to get this uh, something like a sleeveless jacket, uh, light jacket. Uh, but nowadays they have stopped giving this. It seems, uh, or maybe they are giving. But here in India, it's not. Uh, I was not able to order this, and now they are mostly giving this cup, like a coffee mug. And there was one more issue like this is not uh, getting like uh, when it for my professional data engineer exam when it coming through customs it, it got stopped and I was asked to pay for more than 1000 rupees so I didn't opt it for it and I just let it go but this time again I was uh, this cup is available so anyway I have ordered but uh, again if it's customs uh, so you may get or may not get so it depends so this is just a small motivation let's see if it uh, if I get it I will update in the um, in some uh, like in the Udemy uh, resources section whether I got it or not and that's all thanks for watching